Shalom, Pastor Hart coming back at you with this truth, giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, and uh, this is going to be a response to the vision of Ghanaian Pastor Charles Quartain, which was put up by Daily Edification 4, in which he this is a video put up by the beloved brother from England. And he came out to New York a couple of times by himself. Uh, this was a number of years ago. And, um, you know, all praises to that brother. Anyway, uh, so Apostle Gabbard had, did a video, like I said, responding to this video, uh, which is entitled Russia Attacks America in 30 Minutes in a Vision. Now we know here at Great Millstone and some of the other camps, not all, that you have a great deal of Israelites that uh, live in the Africas and pretty much all over the Africa because we're scattered every, everywhere according to the, pursuant to the scriptures. Um, but uh, mainly the bulk, I would say, would be in west, the west coast of Africa. All that west coast from the north all the way down into the south, and even South America, yeah, I mean, South Africa. A lot of those people uh, from uh, South Africa, a lot of them are jaked. You go up to Guyana, I mean, um, um, uh, Ghana, I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Cameroon. So, you know, I just named a couple of those nations, you know, all up and down the West Coast. And if you go to like various videos, you go to YouTube, you put in the people of Ghana or the people of of uh, Nigeria or Sierra Leone or uh, Senegal, <clears throat> you, you can catch their flavor. And they got the flavor of Israelites. They got an Israelite vibe to them. Now, don't get me wrong. They're probably, I would say that they're actual Hamites that are somewhat sprinkled among them. But you can tell by the spirit for the most part. So all these camps especially the camps that came out of one West um, should know that, the, that you got a lot of Israelites in the continent of Africa. So what I'm going to do is, and this is a vision that the brother had. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let you hear some of the video and see where the spirit's going to take me. What I did was I made it easy on myself. You know, you watch videos with certain brothers, elders, and so forth that bring out a lot of different precepts. Well, one way of getting precepts is by putting in the key words. So what I did was I put in the word vision. So I made it easy, easy for myself. I put in the word uh, vision. And it occurs 79 times in 73 verses in the, in the King James Version. And I was reading the first uh, three or four. And um, I'm just going to go with it. Like I said, I'm going to just pick, pick out, I'm a cherry pick certain of these precepts to show you that every, every time the Most High, before the Most High did something, major before he took down the kingdom he always gave visions to his people the israelites he gave them to the prophets the first the first scripture the first uh, precept is uh, genesis 15 and 1 after these things the word of the lord yahweh came unto abram in a vision saying fear not abram i am thy shield or protector and thy exceeding great reward. So now, if you go to the word prophet, right? 
let me see if I can get it. Let me see if it comes up on the blue letter. Let's see if it comes up. Okay, the very first precept when you uh, type in the word prophet is Genesis 20, verse 7. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, which is Abraham's wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are dying. So if you don't restore his daughter, uh, his, his, his wife back, the most high going, he going to take, he going to take you out the pick out the frame. All right. So this, so if somebody says, well, Abraham, not a prophet. Well, that, that, that's, that's the first precept that comes up with the word prophet. And it is, it's talking about Abraham. And he was more than a prophet. He was a friend, like, like Moses. Moses was a friend of the Lord. So these are very important people, Abraham, Moses, the prophets, the kings, King David, which I believe strongly, or was never taught to me, but I believe strongly that Abraham is Abba. Because Abba, which was John the Baptist, Elijah, um, the spirit is strong with him. The spirit, the spirit was very strong with Abba. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and cherry pick some of these precepts here. But uh, let me go. Also, I'm going to go. What I did was I put in... Uh, uh, typed in is Babylon the Great uh, America. So a bunch of sites came up and I did videos on this in the past because you have Edomite pastors that actually believe and teach that uh, Babylon the Great is in fact the United States. So when, you know, these Christians say, well, you, you Hebrew Israelites are saying that Babylon is America. Well, your top Christian uh, uh, scholars, not all of them, but some of them that that focus on the prophetic parts of the scriptures, they pretty much, most of them, if not all of them, say the same thing, that this has to be America, and it makes all the sense in the world. The, the, the part where in the Revelation 18, where it says they shall stand afar off and put dust on their heads and weep uh, for uh, Babylon the Great. As a matter of fact, let me go to that. Let me just read it verbatim. And Revelation chapter 18 is one of, of many of my favorite precepts. I love it because it's the closing credits of a movie, like the last scene where the good guy gets his ass whipped all throughout the movie. And at the end of it, he comes back strong and takes down the bad guy, which is the heavy. And then you have uh, walking away with the with the chick or, or whatever, or he might have uh, a friend that worked with him and he was injured and they walking away in the sunset. Well, that's uh, that Esau's sunset is Revelation 18 because the whole chapter it's a very simple chapter. It's not anything super deep where you have to ask somebody what does this part mean. It's pretty much straightforward. It's just describing what John saw when the missiles hit this place. So let me go to Revelation 18. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but let me see. Because in its video, the Ghanaian pastor mentions, I believe he said he says that America. He believes that America is Babylon, a Babylon great in the, in, the, in the book of Revelation is America.
Okay. Revelation 18, verse 9. That meant for Babylon. And the kings of the earth, the presidents, the leaders, the prime ministers, the, the, the leaders of the world who have committed fornication. Fornication meaning they went to bed with the U.S. They made backdoor deals and upfront deals too. See, every, every nation that's a member of the U.N., which I believe is every major dem democratic nation they are also members of the un united nations so when they sign that on a dotted line that they're uh members of the un guess what they committed they went to bed with with, with uh babylon the great it says and live deliciously with her shall be well her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. And that's going to be on your, your news stations around the world. It's not going to be on C CNN in America, but it will be on C CNN International. Okay, so it says, stand afar off for the fear of her torment. What is a torment? Her torment is the, is the fire saying alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city it was great because of his ideas daniel 7 spake great words that mighty city what made it mighty the military for in one hour is thy judgment come and what's going to destroy a land mass that's, that's uh, 2,000 miles from the, from the north to the south and, and 3,000 miles from the uh, east to the west. So what, what do we say? That's uh, uh, 5,000 5, square miles. That's a lot of land, too. If you ever drove driven across the country, that's hours, man. We made a we went down to the Dallas GMS camp and we drove out there. And that took close to 30 hours. We didn't stay in no hotels and nothing like that. We just we drove through the night <laughs> into the day. Dro drove through the night into the day and uh and then drove all day and then into, into the night. We got over there like two in the morning and we had to drive back. Anyway, um, I, drove, I, I took a bus from here to all the way on the West Coast. And I got tired of that shit. I said, man, I'm gonna start taking planes. So it says standing afar off because they're gonna be situated in their nations for the fear, fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. What? Do they manufacture in America? Not many things. At one time, this was a great uh, place for manufacturing. All those manufacturers that make your different, your TVs, everything, your cars, mostly come from outside of the country. So it's, 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 we import these things. The big 75 inch uh, flat screen uh, smart TV. When you go to like a BJ's or Costco's, you know, that might cost uh, maybe 1200, maybe, maybe 800. Around Christmas, the prices go down. And uh, I mean, that's just one thing of many other things that are shit. Like if you go to BJ's or Costco's or whatever, or even like a Target's, but I'm talking about these big box stores, these wholesale clubs, 
so-called, everything in there is pretty much come from another, uh, another country, manufactured in another country. So guess what? When America goes down, the other nations are going to go, they're going to get poor. They're not going to make money. So let me read that again. Revelation 18, 11, and the merchants, which are the, let me click on that. And merchants go back to the Hebrew, mer mer merkel or merkel, which means uh, seller. Emporos. One on a journey, whether it be uh, by sea or by land, especially for trade, a merchant as opposed to retailer or petty tradesman. A retailer are uh, these big box stores, these smaller stores, which pretty much these smaller stores are done away with. And that, that's what the whole uh, Crown Vic was all about, to destroy the, the middle class. You see these gas prices. This is destroying the trucking industry, man. So prices in turn go up everywhere. This is all by design. And like I said, the word mer merchant goes back as a Hebrew word, which means to sell. Like I said, it says for trade, a merchant, that's why you have a group of people called merchant marines. Those cargo ships that come over, the, the people on that, on that uh, ship, the crew are called merchant marines. So let me go back there and I'm gonna show you the video. Just let me rant a little bit. Okay. Wow, you have to wait a minute. Uh, merchant, let me do this. Merchant Marine, let's see what comes up. United States Merchant Marine. United States, the United States Merchant Marine refers to either United States civilian Marines or the US civilians and federally owned merchant vessels. So who's in charge of these vessels that come from one country to another with goods, with merchandise? The United States Merchant Marines. What is a merchant marine's job? So this is a part of the US government. This is a part of Babylon. The merchant marine is that part of the maritime trade. You have a thing called maritime admiralty law. The law of the sea, the high seas, which in turn became, this whole country is nothing but a sea. So when, when a cruiser, a police car pulls you over, it's, it's you're 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 really on the sea, even though you're on dry land. They took the laws of the sea, and they they put them out out in space. And they also they also uh, like I said, they went from the waters, the marine, which means water, and they put it on land. So these these laws and these tickets and these courts, those those courts are merchant marine type courts. They're admiralty courts. It says the merchant marine is that part of the marine maritime trade. What is trade all about? Merchandise industry concerned with transporting what? Cargo and sometimes passengers from place to place via water routes. It is also known as the, and that's why the, the, um, the, the cargo ships were held back off of the, the West Coast because it was an executive order. 
because the merchant marines are members, even though they're civilians, they're part of the, U the UF US offices. It says, as a commercial shipping industry, merchant marines operate ships and other water vessels on domestic and international waters. Why international? Because those, that merchandise has to come from Ch mostly China, come from other places, but mostly China. And see, China is suffering now too. So when this war started 14 days ago, 15 days ago, two weeks ago, the, the, the uh, Crown Vic just disappeared from the news. A week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I went to a store, I went to this one restaurant and they always had to sign up. Uh, you have to wear the mask and the sign ain't there. And I went up in there and nobody had a mask on. I mean, the work is due. But I went out in there without a mask. They didn't look at me funny. Which we know the backstory with, with the whole Crown Vic. So General Yohanna, you got a lot of explaining to do. So anyway, um, let me come back over here. It says, Revelation 18 and 10, standing far off for the fear of her torment, the, the missiles hitting the place, saying, hey, like, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, that's close to what's going to happen to this place. When the World Trade Centers went down, the whole planet stopped. The whole, the, all America stopped. I was getting paperwork, logistics, uh, for the job I was working, getting ready to deliver them to various offices, corporate offices, and um, the two supervisors was in there, and the one had a small TV, and he had it on channel, I believe, I believe it was channel two, could have been channel seven, and he goes, oh shit, no, look at this. We went in, and you, and you saw the, uh, the breaking news was one of the buildings got hit, so we didn't know it was a plane. We don't know what it was. So we're like, oh, and then we're looking at it. And then all of a sudden a plane, something, a projectile hit the other building. And we're like, oh shit. So what, so what we were talking about, oh shit. And then, and then, we, then we lost all the channels, you know, all the, the basic channels, so to speak. And I believe the only channel that was up was channel two, if I'm not mistaken. Cause he said, check the other channels. Channel two was, I believe, was the only channel up, you know, because it was from a different, because uh, channel two wasn't operating from uh, the towers. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive it was channel two in New York. And um, so I went out to deliver to the, corp the diff different corporate offices. And then at around 1130, they, 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 um, they, they are called off any planes being in the skies. The only planes in the skies were military uh, planes. Jets were flying by. And then they closed down all the offices at around 11.30 into 12. And we couldn't deliver anything. And I remember going to a bar because everybody left the office and they went to this bar. So I went into the bar because I had to del deliver, deliver uh, logistics to them. And it was crowded and everybody was drinking drinks and they were watching um, the TV ahead, man. And that was a somber time. I remember all that. So guess what? That didn't just happen in America. It was, it was breaking news around the whole planet Earth. So guess what? If, 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 that, if the two buildings went down in New York like that and it, and it, and it stopped the whole world, what do you think? The, the, this continent, America, Babylon, being destroyed by missiles, what do you think the, the news is going to report on? Everything going to be breaking news around the world. Al Jazeera, RT, CNN International, 
There's so there's so many news stations out there. You can't keep up with them. I had this one app where it was all news, and it was it was it had to be at least you keep scrolling, keep scrolling. It was all news channels from around the world. I would say, as in a guess, a thousand, at least a thousand news channels going on. And by the way, they completely cut RT or from uh, YouTube. You go to RT America, you can't get it. You go to R regular RT, you can't get it. So it says, uh, It says, excuse me, it says Revelation 18, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment. Let me look at the word torment. Now we know what the, what the torment is. What does it mean by torment? Okay, so let me look up the word torment. Charles G, 929. Basani smas. Basani smas. Bas, basna is mas. Which means to torture, a testing by the touch tone, which is a black, Silicious stone used to test the purity of gold or silver by the color of the streak produced on it by rubbing it with either metal. Torment, torture, the act of tormenting, the state or, or condition of those tormented. So now it says, uh, let me do this. Okay, it's in it's in the book of it's only mentioned in the book of Hebrews. So let me just read a couple of these precepts. So Hebrews nine and five, and this is all talking about the same event. It says uh, Revelation nine and five. Well, this is talking about Revel uh, 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 World War One. It says, and what's in the air? What's in the minds of the people? What came out of the mouth of, uh, of uh, the president, Biden? If we go to war with them, if we set up any offensive weapons against them, that's World War Three. That's what he said, it's World War Three, And World War Three is the war to end all wars, literally. It says, uh, and, them, and to them it was given that they should be not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Kill, kill them meaning just totally destroy them. These European nations came, came back up after the wars. So it wasn't a total destruction. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. Now we, I did a video on it. Um, Apostle Rama did a video on it. I think he was do, doing a video backing up my video concerning World War I. And that the, that the locusts and the scorpions were actually uh, the dog fighters in uh, World War I. The Red Baron and so forth. It says, uh, Revelation 14 and 11. And the smoke of their torment, same, same thing as in Revelation 18 and 10. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever for a long time. Because the smoke is going to eventually clear. Whether it takes seven months or seven years, the smoke is going to clear, uh, clear up. And what you're going to see is a desert. Five, uh, five, uh, five thousand square uh, miles of desert. And they have no rest day or night because they're going to be in the captivity. It's not talking about hell underground somewhere. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So what is, what is the mark? The M-O-T-B. 
And the whole world of Israel is going to find out and they're going to say, you know what? The GMS was right. Revelation 18, verse 7. How much she had glorified herself. That's America. At one time, America had a heyday. And lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. But they're going to see major sorrow. They're going to get hit so hard, they're not going to be able to get back up. So this is Revelation 18 and 10 again. Standing afar off uh, for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, the great city, that great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. The merchants, Revelation 18, verse 15, the merchants, now we went into the definition of a merchant. You have merchant ships and you have merchant marines, which are part of the, the uh, United States merchant marines. That's why the president gave us an ex exec executive order and these ships had to stop because they're under the command of the president. It says the merchant of these things, which were made rich, oh, I'm sorry, the, the merchant, not the merchant marines, but the merchants, the sellers from China and from other nations, mainly China, which were made, which were made rich by her. At one time, Chinese, would, they, they would, you look down on them. There's more uh, uh, Chinese billionaires being produced than America, Canada, Europe, uh, Germany, England. You know, any, anytime you turn around, man, there was, an, I, I looked at a, a list on that, the top billionaires on the planet, as far as nations uh, go, continents go, countries go. And number one was China. And how did they become rich? Through their merchandise, mainly to America, the America and around the world. It says the merchants, which are, I'll say the Chinese, of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Oh, we ain't gonna make no more money. Eleven verse, Revelation 18, 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth. Who's doing the buying? The American public. Who's doing the selling? Who are the merchants? China, I'm just mentioning China. There's other nations too that ship stuff over here, but mainly China. Buyeth, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious. Now what, now what John saw, he saw these things, but he also saw flat screen TVs. He saw automobiles. He saw toasters. He saw, you know, refrigerator. He saw all kinds of things. But all he can, all, what all he can see in that time was uh, gold and silver and so forth and pre precious stones. Oh, just find, I'm just finding out that Russia, they're cutting off the, the precious uh, stones that come from Russia. I didn't know that. I knew that Russia supplied or uh, 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 exported uh, vodka with some of those major companies, um, uh, Smirnoff, and um, there was another one uh, started with an S. I think it's Stoli, if I'm not mistaken, somebody can put it in the, in the uh, the uh, comment section of the, of the stream, but they said that that those companies, a lot of those Russian companies, they started in Russia and they kept the name uh, Smirnoff and other other companies. That that you have people from outside of Russia that owns those those companies, but kept the name. It says uh, 
for the merchants of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls and fine linen. And like I said, what John saw was uh, flat screen TVs and electric vehicles and, you know, because the, there's more than one company that makes an electric vehicle. Uh, and purple and silk and scarlet and all dyed wood and all manners vessels of ivory and, and all manners vessels of precious stone, wood, brass and iron and marble. Jumping down to the 15 again, the merchants of, and I'm merchant, the first country that comes to mind is China. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand off for the fear of a torment, weeping and wailing. And why are they going to weep and well? Because, not because they feel sorry for them, but because they ain't going to make no more money. Ain't gonna make no more money. Everything, everybody's gonna be affected around the whole planet. And this is why, man, I love this this pre, this uh, chapter. 18 verse, Revelation 18, 18, and cried when they saw the smoke of a burning saying, what city is like unto this great city? And everybody in the, on the planet at one time, the big dream was to come to America. The streets are paved with gold. So now let's come back. Bear me for a minute. Let me let you listen to some of this. Okay. So listen up. Double honors for the elders of Great Millstone that are bringing out this word in truth and spirit and sincerity. Double honors to the camps on the highways and byways that bring out the word of the Hamal Bashim Hamal Shai in truth and spirit and sincerity. As you know, this year is the year of prophecy. As we've said, this is the year of prophecy 2020 because things are happening quick and fast. Sick. Now, I believe this video is um, a couple of years old because you said this is the year of prophecy. And I believe that was uh, 2020. Usually every year, Elder Pascal gives um, title for every year. Now this year, 2022, is the year to turn up. So this video would have had to have been a video about a couple of years old. Brother from England who owns this channel, you can confirm that in the comment section. And also I would like the brother to put his name if he doesn't mind in the comment section. And fast, let me tell you. All right. So, what I wanted to go into now was this vision that this Ghanaian preacher had. Now, he's a pastor at some ministry called Messiah Revelation Ministry. All right. Now, came across this earlier today and I want you to listen to the vision that this pastor had, right? He's from Ghana, Kwarteng, Charles Kwarteng. Kwarteng is a, um, a Ghanaian surname. So he's an Israelite because he's from Ghana and he's an Israelite. You know, he ain't got his beard. As you can see, he's not reading the scriptures properly tonight. He should be wearing his beard because he's a minister, right? He's a, apparently he's a minister, he's a pastor, right? But his name is Kwarteng. But like the scripture says, right, our sons and our daughters will prophesy, right? So I want to quickly listen to, to this, what he says, all right, about the vision that he had, all right? And listen carefully to what he says. And then we're going to pull out the scriptures referring to the exact vision that 
Charles Quartin Pang. All right? So listen carefully. My name is Charles Quartin with Messiah Revelation Ministry. Today, I have a very important message. And the message is about a vision that I had. A vision about Russia attacking the United States of America. It was August 22nd, 2018, when I had this vision. In that vision, I found myself within the territory of the United States. I was driving the car. There were traffic lights with yellow lights. I felt in my spirit that there was going to be a warning. I want to give you a precept. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Okay, this is Nahum 2. Uh, let me start at the third verse. You can start at the first. You know what? Let me just proofread this. For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. For the uh, for the emptiers have emptied them out and and marred their vine branches. Talking about Israel, the, us being punished. It says the shield, third verse, the shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. So this is, this, so what, what uh, uh, Nahum saw in the vision he saw cars. Because what a, what's a car? A chariot. It says, shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. And the fir trees shall be terribly shaken. When the missiles hit and that hot wind hit, all those trees are going to be shaken. He said, the chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another. That's these cars. Like if you, you, you know, see a vision or, or, or a scene of a highway, you know, you're looking down from a bird's eye view, you know, you even go on Broadway. Broadway, you know, Broadway is all over. The, every, every state has a Broadway. So the cars are jostling, you know, against each other, trying to uh, cut in Anyway, I said the chariots, which are cars, shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightnings. Because in the ancient world, you can only go so fast with a chariot. But uh, with these cars, when you're on a highway, you know, the speed limit might be 55. Everybody's driving. 70, 70, 75, 80. So they're moving quick. They're moving like lightning. So, so that's what, that's what uh, Nahum saw in his vision. So let me, let me come back. Immediately, I heard a radio 
broadcast in my car. And the message was that it had been announced in Russia that Russia was going to attack the United States in 30 minutes in time. There was panic and pandemonium in the United States. Everybody was running away. People were stuck in their homes. I left the car on the streets and I also decided to run away. Then I woke up. That was the end of the vision. This is one of the many visions that I have about the United States. There are a lot of people who believe that the United States is not mentioned in the Bible. They don't believe that the United States is the Babylon the Great that is spoken of in the Bible. That is spoken of in the States is the Babylon the Great that is spoken of in the Bible. They don't believe that the United States is the Babylon the Great that is spoken of in the Bible in Revelation chapter 18. If you have a Bible, please open to Revelation chapter 18. So I'll stop it there. Stop reading to God forever. He had a vision. He had a vision. Is that the right scriptures? Is that the right scriptures? He had a vision that he saw America being attacked by Russia. He said that he heard that there was a news broadcast in Russia, came out from Russia, saying that they're going to attack the United States in 20 minutes. Right? They said he was driving, and he said that in that vision he was driving in America, through America, and he said all the traffic lights went amber, orange. So they go amber normally before they go red. I think they can go any other way, basically, in that. And I believe they still go amber to green as well. But he specifically talk about it going from amber to red. So this is the vision that he had. This is a pastor. He had this vision, all right? He's a Ghanaian. So he's, he's, he's an Israelite. He's an Israelite. He believes that America's Babylon the Great. And I looked on his website also, and just to look at see what, what other things he was preaching, and you know, he was speaking about some stuff to do with the LGBTQ, you know, the most protective group out there, saying that that's one of the greatest curses of America. It is Sodom and Gomorrah, he was mm -hmm. saying. And he was also speaking about the African Americans and West Indies and Caribbeans being the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. Okay, so I'm going to pause it there. So obviously, uh, this man, Charles Boateng, he's been watching us for how long, I don't know, but. There's certain things that he said that he had to have gotten it from us Israelites that they teach it. Now, one uh, scripture I want, I want to bring out before I go into the main scripture for this lesson is uh, the book of Joel, the second chapter, because indeed this man had a vision. He had a vision of uh, the time in America when it would be announced that. Russia will be attacking America and said in 30 minutes, meaning they, they have already launched the missiles and the missiles are on their way. And the missiles are in the scriptures. And so is the mindset of Russia attacking America. That's also in the scriptures. So this is the book of uh, Joel, the second chapter. I'm going to read the, uh, the 28th verse says, and it shall come to pass afterward. So this is prophecy found in the book of Joel, right? It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that's what you just saw with this man, uh, Charles Quarte. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, who is sending out his God, poured out his spirit on that man for him to have that vision. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And his vision lines up with the scriptures. So that's how we know his vision was really sent 
from the heavenly father and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions we just saw an example of that with this Charles Quartin, who's definitely in Israel. Okay. Yeah, he has to be an Israelite, you know, for him to have that vision and for him to say he believes uh, Babylon the Great is America. And uh, for, he, for him to believe, as the brother said, that he believes that the, you know, the you know, the so-called blacks of America are Israelites. So, you know, it can't be no heathen. Let's listen to a little bit more. Uh, read on, it says, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens. Now we're in that time now. And in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And by the way, that's how America's going to be totally destroyed by fire from the, from the missiles and from the chariots. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. So we're in that time now. We're, pre we're preparing ourselves mentally we're preparing ourselves mentally for that day, okay? By uh, getting into these scriptures, getting into these prophecies. All right, so from there, let's go to... Uh, because this is what we're supposed to be talking about, the scriptures, but the focus now is on the prophetic part of the scriptures. What did the Apostle Peter say in uh, 2 Peter uh, 3? I believe that's around, you can start the 10th verse. Um, for the elements will melt with fervent heat. Um, he goes on to say, seeing that all these things must come to pass, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversations? So what are you supposed to be talking about? You're supposed to be talking about the scriptures overall, but the focus of the scriptures are the prophetic parts of the scriptures. And I mean, this is a big game changer with this uh, situation over there in Russia. They say that, um, I was listening to it today on the news, they say that, uh, and after this video, I'm put it put on uh, various news channels and go to some all alternative news channels on YouTube and so forth. They, they're saying as of today, which is a Saturday, that they're 15 miles away from the capital, which is Kiev, or we used to say Kiev. So we're def this thing is definitely close. Romans 13, for our salvation is nearer than we believe. And we've been, we kept our eyes on the prophecies. Habakkuk 2. If it tarry, wait for it. It shall not tarry. It shall surely come. It shall speak and not lie. So possibly we can be out of here by the end of 2022. Or the beginning of 2020, 20, 2023. And um, we suffered the winter. And like I said in the previous video, this was a mild winter. So if you're not on fire about this truth, you better get on fire. You better get brownie points with the most high. Because this thing is coming. That's, look, this is why we're not dealing with Sarnetta and his debate system. And Captain Cesare has no business being with them, man. What is that? And uh, let me get that real quick. Second Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken, I'm positive is Second Corinthians. 
I believe it's 6, verse 13. Let's see. Okay, it's 14. Actually, it's in 14. It says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And it's talking about Israelites that don't believe. If they don't believe, move on. Don't be around them. They said, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellow, fellowship have righteousness, which is us, with unrighteousness? That comedic stuff, that Moorish stuff, whatever it, they're into, we're not, to, we're not to be mingled with them. We're not to be joined unto them. It says, and what commune have light with darkness? We have the light and they have the darkness. So I don't need to have a, a, a debate with somebody that's into some wayward, you know, religion that we know is not the truth. The most I didn't tell, tell you that. He didn't tell you to do that. It said, in what concord have the Messiah with Balao? And Balao, who controls all these uh, uh, alternative lifestyles, I'll call it, call it? The spiritual demon Satan. Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? And the word infidel is an unbeliever. 16 verse. And, and what agreement have the temple of the Most High with idols? For ye are the temple of the living power, the Most High, Yahweh. As the Most High have said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their power, and they shall be my people. It said, wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. It's not talking about Esau. We know to be separate from Esau, but to be separate from these jakes that don't follow this truth. The Apostle Paul said, I believe that's 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, if they be ignorant, let them be ignorant. I'm merely paraphrasing. It's a 17 verse. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, say if Yahweh, and touch not the unclean thing, because they're unclean. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, say if Yahweh, the Most High Almighty. So we got no business being with them. Our job is to go out there and tell them whether they hear or forbear. Let's listen to a little bit more. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. This is the main scripture. Bear me for a minute. Now, I've gone into the scripture before, but I mean, we're going to be bringing out the scripture a lot because we're in that time with the way Putin has been acting. That's the spirit of the Lord Yahweh, who is sending Yahweh Shai on that man to fulfill prophecy. Russia is going to be the main country, along with their allies, to shoot missiles at America, and that's according to Bible prophecy. 
Is it uh, prophecy? Uh, uh, let me see. It's Jeremiah, I believe. I think it's Jeremiah, the 51st chapter. <clears throat> Let me take a look. Jeremiah, the 51st chapter. It's also in Isaiah 13. Yeah, um, let's start at the ninth verse. Now, you heard this man, Charles Quartain, said he's, he's had many visions of America. And uh, he firmly believes that America is Babylon the Great, okay? Which it is. The word Babylon means confusion. This place is nothing but a, 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 a this place is nothing but the land of confusion. I always talk about that song by Genesis. Phil Collins and you know, Tony Banks and Mike Rutherford. Three of them, they uh, had a group called Genesis is actually more of them, but Peter Gabriel at one time was part of Genesis. Peter Gabriel is famous for Sledgehammer and a couple of other good songs, Salisbury Hill and all that. Um, and it might be Jake, Jake's, the artist that he mentioned, you know, Phil Collins of, uh, uh, what is that, uh, Genesis and um, Palmer. Robert Palmer, I think he mentioned. A lot of these guys come out of England. A lot of them are Jake that look like Edomites. The speckled bird. So they did that song, um, Genesis. They did the song, Land of Confusion. And in the video, it's uh, uh, Gorbachev versus Ronald Reagan. So back then, people thought, America. Now, this was back in the 80s. People thought America was going to mix it with Russia back then. And that's what the movie uh, uh, Rocky IV was all about. It was about the, you know, building on the hype between uh, America and Russia. America and Russia was going to go at it. Okay? And Reagan was in office. And guess what? It didn't happen. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to guess. <laughs> it was still here, right? So now we're in the time where that's that same spirit is being revived again. You know, Russia, eventually Russia is gonna come at America. We're definitely we're definitely in the time where we believe it's gonna happen. Okay. And all the prophecies are there. But anyway, um Jeremiah 51 and 9, you would have healed Babylon, which is America, but she is not healed. America got so many problems, man. You know, from the infrastructure to the moral of the people to the man, America's done. It's finished. It had its run. Now it's done. Okay. I was just going to say that. <laughs> but she's not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country. And the people that came here to America to make, to make it rich, that's starting to be their mentality. You know, uh, America's not that. Uh, land of gold as it once was, you know. So dad said to his man, we should go back to our own country. We do better in our own country. And truth be told, their countries was way better than America, man. Right? Okay? That the hype of America is, is, is slowly dwindling. Anyway, let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And Russia is part of America's judgment because Russia is going to be the country the Lord is going to use to shoot missiles on this place. We're going to read that. The Lord has brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our power. The one thing the Heavenly Father always does before he brings down a, 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 a nation. Right? One, one thing he does is he sets up his prophets to prophesy against that nation. Then he destroys it. Okay, in the same book, 
Jeremiah 28, right? Jeremiah 28 and 9. Let's read that. Jeremiah 28 and 9 it says, the prophet, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 28 and 7 and 8. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy, prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So it's no different with America. The Heavenly Father always sent the prophets first to prophesy against a kingdom or a nation before he takes it down. So America is no different. Right, so now, and we're those prophets that the Heavenly Father, the Hallow Tree, Sunday Hallow have raised up to prophesy against this place called America, to prophesy its downfall and its destruction. And we're in the time of its downfall. Like I said, America will never be as great as it once was, like say during the 50s. The peak of America's greatness was the, really the 50s. All right, the 50s. And then um, the early 60s. Now, by the late 60s, America started dwindling down. Even uh, the comedian George Collin, before he passed away, uh, the comedian George Collin said, America is sickly in the drain. To quote his words, he said, This country, and he said that on the Glenn Beck show, all right? Uh, he said, This country is circling the drain. Then he went into the term, the medical term, CTD, which is in uh, an abbreviation for circling the drain. Okay, so that's what's happening with America, circling the drain. It'll never, America, this is a fact, America will never go to the prominence that it once had back in the 50s and the early 60s. Those days are done. Okay, so all that's left for this place is destruction, CTD. So back to Jeremiah 51 and 10, the Lord have brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our power. And that's exactly what we're doing. Part of the work of the Lord our power is how he's going to destroy this place. With nuclear missiles and the chariots, man. That's part of the work of the, the, the Heavenly Father doing it. Because he wants to set up his son on the planet Earth to rule in righteousness. If you go in the book of Psalm, the second chapter goes into that. How the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, has chosen his son, Yahweh Shai, to rule this planet Earth in righteousness. And by default, that's the kingdom of Israel. Okay, so that's exactly what we're doing. Come and let us declare the, in Zion the work of the Lord our power. Then it goes on to say, make bright the arrows. What do you think the arrows are? That's those missiles, man. Make them bright. Get them ready. Gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. So now the modern day kings of the Medes are the so-called Russians led by this guy, uh, Vladimir Putin, because the, where Russia is located today at one time, uh, the Medes control those areas. That's why you're not gonna see Russia here. The Medes control those, those uh, areas, all right? Uh, Japheth, all right, the seed of Japheth. Okay, that's why in other scriptures, you'll see God and Magog, which were sons of, of Japheth. Uh, God and Magog represents Russia. Because where, where Russia is located today, at one time, the land of God was located there. You, you see, this Bible is like Elder Pascal always says, the rest of it. This Bible is written in code. And you got to be able to break the code. The only way you can do that is with the Habash and Yasha. It's truly dealing with you and reveal the secrets of these scriptures through the Holy Spirit. Then you're able to decodify the Bible and understand it. But if, 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 if you have not decode the, decode the Bible, right, if you have not decoded through the Holy Spirit, you won't be able to understand it. Okay? Because the Bible, the book is codified. So it says, make the, the arrows, or make bright the arrows. Again, that's code. It ain't talking about an actual arrow. It's talking about the missiles. The missiles are known as arrows. That's a metaphor for the missiles in the Bible. You're not going to see nuclear missile in the Bible. You're not going to see missile in the Bible. But you, you're going to see arrows because they had arrows back in, back in that time. 
Jeremiah is going to use the word that describe what they had back then for what is being used now. Okay, and and indeed the missiles do look like an arrow when you look at it carefully. So it says, "Make bright the arrow, gather the shield." The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, that would be the so-called Russians, for his device is against Babylon. That's America. That's why Charles Quartain had the vision that he had. And it's certain America will be destroyed by Russia and the other countries that's going to shoot missiles at us. For his device against Babylon, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it because it it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple, right? For what uh, the so-called white man over in America have, have done to the Lord's chosen people, which are the Israelites. So it's clearly, um, when you go in Zechariah, they fucked up when they brought, first of all, number, they did two things. They um, stole the land from the so-called North American Indians, which are of the tribe of Gad and the nation of Israel. So they offended the Most High there. And then they brought over the so-called Negroes, which are the tribe of Judah and Benjamin and Levi, and brought them over to America in, in brutal, hardcore slavery to work the lands that they stole. So they fucked up there. Okay? So they did two great offenses against the Heavenly Father. And for that, the Heavenly Father said, man, I'm going to bring vengeance on this place. I'm going to destroy this place. And by the way, the word American is bitter. You know, the so-called white man messed up and he he treated the Israelites the way he treated them. Stole their land and brought them into slavery. And let's read the book of uh, Zechariah 2 and 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, beginning with the nation of Edom. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Right. And that was proven with the Egyptians. You saw what the Lord did to the Egyptians. All right. How they were drowned. Right? So what did he do? Pharaoh and his army. So guess what? America is the modern day Egypt. Okay? Any dime, st dime store scholar knows that. America is the modern day Egypt. So the same way ancient Egypt, their army was destroyed, the same way America is going to be destroyed. Okay? Now, in conclusion of this lesson, let's go to Ezekiel the 38th chapter. All right, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. Because the two countries in there, um, Russia has been attacked, that's Israel and America. And you can find that in, um, you can find that in the book of Ezekiel 38 and 8. After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, which is in that time now, Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the soul. Now, let's talk once again. Let's talk about Russia because when you go to uh, the second verse, the subject matter is Russia. Let's start the first verse. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Magog, which represents Russia today, the chief prince of Musha and Tubal, and prophesy against him. So, we're going, to, we're going to jump down to, um, well, in the fourth verse, and Elder Apostle Rama did a video on this. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And that's what's happening with the mentality of Russia. They want to go back to this imperialist power they once were. You know, Vladimir Putin made a statement. He said he wants to bring back Mother Russia. That's exactly what, they, what they're doing. That's why they moved on the Ukraine, which the, the Ukraine was trying to be part of NATO. And uh, Vladimir Putin's not having it, okay? And the Ukraine is part of Russia. That, that area of land is part of Russia. So Vladimir Putin wants the Ukraine, or the mindset of the Ukrainians to be the mindset of Mother Russia, okay? And that's all according to Bible prophecy. So jumping down to the eighth verse, after many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back yeah, so I'm getting ready to close it. Let me just read through this. There's a lot of reading right here. If I remember, I'll leave the link in the description box. This is called truthonlybible.com. 
And this is uh, the case for identifying Babylon the Great with the United States of America. I'm gonna put this in my favorites. A lot of, I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but uh, I may come back and maybe read most of it at another time. But um, I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the precepts, the unity of Revelation 17 and 18. <clears throat> Traditionally, most, not all, pre-tribulationist interpreters have differentiated differentiated the, the Babylon the Great of Revelation 17 from the Babylon from the Babylon the Great in Revelation 18. It's the same Babylon arguing that Revelation 17 speaks of an apostate church symbolically as a harlot. It ain't talking about a church. And that Revelation 18 describes a literal city. Well, Revelation 17 is talking about that same city. And a city is, is as, as big. The word city comes from the word, sit, uh, you get the word uh, citizens. You might say, well, I'm a, I'm a citizen of New York. I'm a citizen of California. But you're all citizens of the US. So what is the US? It's a big city, a major city. It's so big that it has, it has cities or states within it. It says, uh, an analysis of Revelation 17 and 18 shows that both chapters refer to the same entity because it is the same entity. Revelation chapter 17 is not talking about, most of them say the Roman Catholic institution, the RCC. Shows that both uh, chapters refer to the same entity and that this is a political entity, not an apostate church. So you're teaching that uh, Babylon, the greatest Vatican city, you, you clearly going off. A pretty good article. Like I said, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but let me do a word search, word find on America. And like I said, I'm getting ready to close. Okay, it's eight times, found eight times, which is the title, the case of for identi identifying Babylon the Great with the, U with the United States of America. It says here the article will argue that Babylon the Great is the United States of America. All of these uh, characteristic, characteristics uniquely and definitely match the United States of America. The great polis, the term, that's a Greek term, generally denotes a racial or ethnic group and there is no American race, right? Because it's a place, it's a place. It says the, the nature and scope of Babylon the Great dominance is such that only one such entity 
could ever exist in the history of the world. And there is no doubt that the United States of America is this entity. And then you have uh, the people with their uh, comments. But let me read this one. Mary Anderson said, it is so clear, only the blind cannot see, but the Bible tells us they have eyes but cannot see and ears but cannot hear. Americans in particular are so hell yeah USA that they are brainwashed against the truth, the truth spelled out plainly in the Bible. It's not spelled out plain, plainly. You have to have uh, spiritual eyes to see this. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.